Hi, everyone. Uh, would love to be with you all in person at Global Fact, um, but happy to be presenting in this virtual format today. My name is Jessica Collier. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Texas at Austin and a research associate with the Center for Media Engagement there. I conducted this project in collaboration with my co-authors at Vanderbilt University, Lisa Fazio and Renak Pillai. Um, and we're looking at how we can test knowledge as a means of battling misinformation. And so in the process of getting people to read fact checks and making sure that they spend time with them, we were really interested in what happens once people have read a fact check, how can we improve their memory of that and make sure that they retain the information going forward. So we first turned to quizzes as a potential avenue for helping that. So there's a little bit of research on multiple choice tests and how they improve memory even weeks after people have been quizzed on information. And specifically with regard to news organizations, there's some evidence that multiple choice tests or quizzes can improve engagement. They make people stick with the news longer and those people also report greater knowledge uh, when they've read a news article that was accompanied by a quiz. So we thought that might be an avenue to explore. Here's what we did. We tested quizzing before and after reading a fact check. So here's an example of one of the quizzes that people would have seen. Um, simple multiple choice quiz, four possible answer choices, one of them is correct. Um, they were asked two of these questions, either before or after reading a fact check. And some people saw no quiz at all, so that we'd have a point of comparison. Next, we tested multiple fact checks. So we wanted to make sure that quizzes weren't just really good for one particular fact check, but that we could compare across a couple. So we used uh, two fact checks about a piece of health information. Um, we chose things that weren't polarizing or political so that hopefully when we quizzed people, we were getting knowledge and not sort of pre-existing attitudes or beliefs. Um, the two topics that we chose were um, marijuana leading to remission of Crohn's disease, and the other was about um, women's bodies retaining male DNA cells in the brain. So here's what we tested, what we really wanted to measure as an outcome of the study. And the first was an accuracy rating of the false claim. So here's an example of the scale. Uh, they would be presented with the false claim and then asked to rate on a scale of zero being very inaccurate to 10 being very accurate, um, how accurate they believe the false claim to be. And in addition to accuracy, we also wanted to measure recall. So they received four of these open-ended questions after um, reading the fact check and seeing the quiz, and they had to answer in these open end boxes, um, you know, what's the most likely source of male cells, so really specific details about what they would have read in the fact check itself. And here are our results. So the first finding was that quizzing didn't affect immediate accuracy ratings. So for people who were tested immediately after reading the fact check and taking the quiz, if that's what condition they were in, uh, we don't see really any change in accuracy here. We do note that those who read the marijuana fact check actually rated the false claim as significantly more accurate than those who read the DNA fact check. So there's something interesting and problematic going on there. One week later, we see similar results. Quizzing had no effect on accuracy ratings, as you can see here. Um, and then finally, comparing those people who were tested immediately versus those people who were tested one week later, we see some similar levels of accuracy. So nothing changes over time. And within those time periods, there are no significant effects on accuracy. However, uh, when we look at recall, so those um, four questions that they were asked to answer, we, the left-hand axis here represents the proportion of correct responses to those questions we see that um, quizzes do improve immediate recall of information in the fact check. So for the marijuana article here, we see that people who were in either of the quiz conditions answered about 70% of those questions correctly, um, which is pretty awesome considering their open-ended responses and people have to generate answers to those very complex health-related questions. Also, we show that um, it improves delayed recall of information in the fact check. So even one week later, Participants in the quiz conditions are still answering correctly between 20 and 40% of those questions. 
Um, and here we also note that those in the marijuana fact check condition answered significantly more questions correctly than those in the DNA fact check condition. Um, which is interesting because they rated the false claim as more accurate, but they're really good at recalling these specific details. So our key takeaways from this project are that quizzes don't help readers accurately identify a false claim. We don't have any evidence for that really, but they do help readers remember specific details from a fact check, which might be as important. Um, we show that these effects persist for two different fact checks and they persist even after a one week delay. So they're not just some immediate fleeting um, findings, but they do sort of hold up after a week. And our next steps for this research are to um, conduct some more experiments using new types of quiz questions. We wanna know if maybe asking things that are more specific to the false claim itself might improve that accuracy rating. Also, uh, some analyses on how the amount of time that people spend reading fact checks um, might change their responses. And then finally, some possible field tests using our quiz creator tool developed by the Center for Media Engagement, um, which is just an iframe that plugs into any website um, and to see whether these hold up on actual fact checking websites in a real world setting. And then finally, uh, this project was made possible thanks to funding from the Democracy Fund and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. So thank you to those folks. And uh, if you have any questions, here's all of our contact information. Um, feel free to reach out and we would be happy to chat with you. Thank you.